Anyways, I'll just kind of start and uh, we'll get ready. Uh, so we've got Anne Donaldson in here from Medieval Metal. We've just done a podcast. Uh, how, how do you feel the podcast actually went? It was all right. I think I rabbited a bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, um, you brought some goodies to me, yeah? so we thought we'd, uh, rather than kind of waste them, we'd just kind of... Like we done, we had the magician in the last time, and he kind of showed us a few tricks, so th that was kind of wasted. Uh, we thought you'd maybe get you to do some a wee bit of demo on some of the stuff you brought in. <laughs> so could you introduce this? <laughs> well, this is just a, an axe, a war axe. Mm -hmm. A war axe is a one-handed weapon. If it's got the the blade on both sides, then it's much bigger than a two-handed weapon. Mm -hmm. It's a battle axe. Right. Now, some people might say, I'm a battle axe, <laughs> and now it applies to women. Um, some women, I should say. But the war axe could be wielded in one hand, and mm -hmm. it was a, a sturdy weapon used a lot by the Vikings. I mean, you've got an axe, you can cut down any wood or timber for fires or whatever, you can also use it in battle, it's pretty good. They mm -hmm. have all sorts, this is a very plain one, but you do have others that are decorated up, and can be used for various things. Some have a, mm -hmm. a, a hammer end on the, the other side so you could turn them and hit somebody with it. But I think if you were hit with that, that would do the trick. I don't think oh, you right. need much else. But um, quite often these would be used, women would use them, Vikings would use them, mm -hmm. because when the men were away, they had to protect their homes. So they were not, like Celtic women, that's oh, yeah. probably why Scots women are so belligerent, <laughs> <laughs> because they were entrusted with looking after the family and the home when the men were away doing other things, mm. um, usually taking war to somebody else. <laughs> so you were ready for them, you know, and if you, if you managed to uh, have a go at people, mm -hmm. the women would come out and fight as well. Right. You know, that was part of the the expected thing of them, that they would do that. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's quite a, a straightforward one. You could also throw an axe. Mm -hmm. Just got your washing added onto this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a sword, and it's scabbard. Um, scabbard is, is beautifully put together yes, so that it doesn't, it doesn't get damaged if it, if it was bumped into anything or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, attached to your belt. It would hang down depending on whether you were left-handed or right-handed. This is a one-handed sword. It takes one hand to hold it. Mm -hmm. Swords that had one and a half species there for a hand, they were known as hand and a half swords, or to give them their proper name, but people get all embarrassed about it. They're called bastard swords. Right. And then you've got the big two-handed swords that will give them all this type of sword where you've got, you can get both hands on there. And mm -hmm. because of the length and the weight of it, you would need both hands. Right. Great big swords, big heavy swords. People don't appreciate how heavy a sword is yeah. until they've actually held it. And if you can imagine fighting with one of these, mm -hmm. I mean, even one at this size, which is not the biggest that you would get, it's a one-handed sword, that would take a lot of stamina, which was why swordsmen in battle were generally very well muscled because yeah, yeah. they really needed to use the muscles across their backs and their shoulders to build mm -hmm. the sword properly. Um, I don't know if you want the cards had a look at as well. Oh yeah, you can do it. Um, these, these are medieval cards, set of them. Uh, you'll notice, for instance, that the kings, the kings are actually just straight up and down. There's no there two-headed king. Mm -hmm. At that point, these would have been all hand printed and then coloured in, so they were quite expensive. So you, you had a whole set of them, the queens and the kings would be sitting down, but when you get to what we would call the jacks, they're really interesting because you've got a swordsman, mm -hmm. you've got an archer, you've got a pikeman, and you've got a man with a crossbow. So mm. that dates them. That's after the invention of the crossbow. Mm -hmm. Before that, you would probably find some other weaponry. Um, it might have been, a, it have been a, a different kind of sword. It might have been various things, but the crossbow dates it to after that time. Nothing on the back because it was too expensive to yeah. do that. And no numbers on them. Yeah. No numbers and no J for Jack or 
Keith or Neve or whatever, because uh, most people would count just by going one, two, three, four. Yeah. They wouldn't be able to recognise the numbers. Right. So right, right. they just, you know, they would count the, the numbers that were on it. And the same with the letters. If you couldn't read, then it, K didn't tell you that was the king. The crown did. And the fact mm -hmm. he was sitting on a throne, that told you that was the king. Right, right. So there was, you know, that was how they did it. Excellent. But uh, they were used for a lot of card games. Mm -hmm. A lot of card games. But, uh, Excellent. Is there anything else you wanted to ask? Uh, no, no, that's it, that's it. No, that's perfect. Thanks very much. No problem.